Hey, good afternoon. Sorry about that. Oh, I think we've got some sort of... Uh, Okay, I think that's better now. I think we've solved that. Sorry about that. Um, hello, um, I'm Amelia Bodel. I'm the Hospitality and Catering Technical Advisor, and I'm here today with my colleague Jason Ben to talk to you about coming for an hour. Um, so we've got a number of slides to go through. Uh, essentially, all of this will be recorded. You're in listen-only mode, um, so you won't be able to ask us any verbal questions, but you can basically use your question box to type in any questions that you want to. And should we have enough time, then we will answer your questions at the end. If for some reason we run out of time, then we will take the questions away, and we are putting together more frequently asked questions, and we will let you have those as well. Equally, um, at the end, uh, by next week, we'll have recorded the webinar and we'll obviously email the recording out to you so that you've got that as well. Um, and should you need that to sort of share with any colleagues or indeed anyone else on the list that registered, we'll share it with um, those as well. So Jason, do you want to say hello? Hello, uh, Jason Ben, Industry Manager for Hospitality and Catering Portfolio. Um, just going to uh, move to the next slide. It's a look. Okay, so uh, the agenda for this afternoon, uh, we're just going to give you a little bit of information on how you can keep up to date, uh, some steps towards EPA, gateway requirements, uh, the recipe logs, initial meetings, multiple choice tests, we'll cover the culinary challenge, practical observations and the professional discussion and then uh, some general feedback and general points uh, for you to uh, consider. So first of all, um, if you go to our uh, web pages and look on key documents, we keep in the key documents various uh, information uh, that you can uh, use. For example, the month monthly newsletters, they're uploaded uh, every month uh, with up-to-date information, particularly around endpoint assessments as well as other uh, qualification matters. And uh, we also put on there any uh, new videos, any new uh, webinars or uh, slide decks from um, some of our events that uh, particularly Amelia does around the country, so you can keep up to date. Don't forget, if you're not already uh, subscribed to Alerts, that's where we notify you of when things are updated on uh, the Key Documents uh, website or web page. Um, so just first of all, uh, some of the EPA documents that are available uh, to you. You do need the um, Assessment pack, so there's an assessment pack for both Chef to Party and Commie Chef. There's just the example here of uh, a screenshot for Commie Chef. But uh, upon uh, registration, then you would be able to get access to the assessment pack, which gives you the whole details of what's required to get you through endpoint assessments and the process. You also get access to uh, the EPA preparation tool, which will help your learners and support them with some of the other aspects around endpoint assessments and preparing them for it, such as um, helping them with some of the non-subject specific uh, challenges that they may face, whether it's uh, preparing a presentation or interview techniques for the um, for professional discussion, for example. So you can get access to that, as well as some other resources that are available to support both uh, the assessors and the, um, the apprentice through each aspect of the assessments. And they're available once, uh, once, once you've got learners registered. Okay, so if we talk you through the process of the endpoint assessment, so it can start at the point of um, registration. So um, I know some of you will already know this, but we're just sort of going to go right from the beginning, right through, and then as I said, you know, we can answer some questions, hopefully if we have time, and if not, we'll sort of put them in FAQs. Um, but yes, yeah, so you need to start by registering your apprentice on Wall Garden um, as soon as possible, essentially. So I appreciate that our standards don't have qualifications in them, but to some degree, we're treating them in this model as if we do. So your registration will then release your access to the um, 
guidance documents that um, Jason showed you in the previous two slides. So that's why we're suggesting that you do that as soon as possible. Um, it'll um, obviously give you the passwords and then you'll be able to access the EPA preparation tool. If you've got any problem with accessing that tool, then we did on the previous slide add in an email address that you can use to actually contact SmartScreen about your subscription to the EPA preparation tool. So um, once you've obviously registered your apprentice on Wall Garden in exactly the same way as you would um, in terms of registering a qualification, then you obviously then carry on the process in terms of preparing your learner for endpoint assessment. Um, so prior to actually making any bookings for endpoint assessment, you have to um, reach the gateway. So at this point, then you're going through the gateway, and we'll talk about the gateway um, a little bit more um, later on. But essentially, you go through the gateway, and then you make your request to book for endpoint assessment. So on this slide here, it says um, that usually it takes three months then before the endpoint assessment process can mm -hmm. be carried out. But we have got much swifter in that. So in some instances, endpoint assessment is now happening in 60 days, not 90 days. Um, but once you've made that booking, then we can start to have that conversation with you, or at least our endpoint assessment team can. Um, and we can then sort of talk, talk to you more about your requirements. So we then ask you, once you've made your booking, we contact you or the endpoint assessment team do, and they start to gain um, contact details for you. And those details, as you can see there on this slide, are for basically all the information that we need to carry out endpoint assessment, and then at the end to actually um, claim the space for you. We um, give you access to the EPA portal and we ask you to submit the Gateway Declaration. Um, the Gateway Declaration can be found in our EPA recording packs, which are in exactly the same place as the EPA assessment packs. We also ask you at that point for English and Maths certificates or any exemptions, and in the case of Level 2, that they've clearly sat the Level 1 test as well. And then at this point, we would ask you to also be uploading to the EPA portal. Um, we would ask you to also be uploading um, the recipe log. Um, I think you're probably right. I've just seen a question sort of pop up. Um, and yes, you're absolutely right. Um, it is 366 days um, that, um, with regard to set one. So thank you for that. Absolutely. So the apprentice has to be on programme for at least 366 days before you can actually um, start to make your booking. So before you can go through the gateway. Lovely. So um, once we've received this information, then we'll obviously start to confirm um, the dates. But what we will be doing is we will be checking that the recipe logs are complete um, and that we have all the information that we need. Um, so we will uh, make sure that the recipe logs are complete and then we'll move on with booking the initial meeting and the endpoint assessment process um, will then sort of continue in that manner. Um, and you'll be um, given notification of who your endpoint assessors are, and the endpoint assessment events will then continue and carry out um, along with the process. Um, at the end of the process, then you're um, given sort of your, the whole process finishes, and within 20 days, you'll receive your um, final notification as to the actual results in terms of whether the um, apprentice has a, a pass or a distinction, and then we go about making the claim for the apprenticeship certificate from the IFA, and that certificate then goes to the employer, um, and we will then send you the summary of achievement, which will come directly to you, the training provider. Okay. So the, obviously the gateway process, the gateway meeting um, has to happen um, prior to your apprentices going through the gateway. Um, so this is the meeting that happens between yourselves as the um, training provider, the um, tutor, the apprentice, and then the employer. 
Um, and obviously, um, as was pointed out earlier, that is um, after 356 days on program. So all three parties need to review the apprentice achievements and then agree that that apprentice is ready to go through the gateway. And it's at that point that obviously the gateway declaration is then completed. So um, you can see here sort of the slide does um, pick up that timeline. Um, so we absolutely need those three things initially, those three ducks in line. Um, the gateway meeting is taking place and the declaration's been signed. Maths and English evidence is available and the learner's been on programme for those at least 366 days. At that point, you can make your um, booking for endpoint assessment and bear in mind that you need to be uploading that recipe log along with a two week work schedule plus um, your maths and English gateway declaration to the EPA portal at the point that access is given to you for that. So that slide there is just showing you exactly where the gateway document, the declaration is stored. So that's in our recording forms, which is underneath the assessment pack, as you can see there. Um, it includes as well the initial meeting recording form and a declaration of authenticity as well. And there's the um, just the gateway declaration so that you can clearly um, sort of see that. And that's the one that we'll need uploading to the EPA portal, having been signed by the apprentice yourself and the employer. Okay, so recipe logs. Um, I think a question just popped up about recipe logs, so hopefully as we're going through we'll answer that question, if not we will have a look. So these are specifically for the commie chef, um, and I've got another slide that shows you um, exactly the requirements for chef to party. So these appendix are found in the endpoint assessment pack um, that we've shown you where that is on the website, and that's the one that's password protected. So here for commie chef, you can see that the recipe log requirements must cover those minimum ranges that are stated there. So what we ask you to do is to ensure that that evidence is uploaded per apprentice to the EPA portal. And we also ask you to upload that the appendix six, the one on the right hand side, which then basically references the dishes so that you can clearly see that using appendix six, for example, um, a fish dish. And clearly that appendix is a lot longer than that. That's just the sort of the start point of it. We can clearly then cross reference so that we can check. But if everything that's on that appendix is behind it with all the recipe logs, then essentially we've met those minimum requirements within the assessment plan and we can then move on to the next stage. And here's the chef to party one. So um, exactly the same in terms of the layout of the appendix six, but obviously the requirements of the recipe log is slightly different there. Um, and you can see that um, it does stipulate there at the top that the chef departed, um, at least seven of those food groups need to be covered of the eight that are listed. So recipe logs, what do they need to contain? Um, so I'm hoping by the end of, um, or by the beginning of February, we will have a full exemplar recipe log to share with everybody, which hopefully will help a little bit um, because obviously the guidance isn't that clear. Um, there is an exemplar of a page of a recipe log within the exemplar materials which are found in the EPA preparation tool. So by all means do go and have a look at that. Um, but I do hope that we will be able to provide you with sort of full recipe log um, very soon. So essentially those recipe logs must contain full recipes um, and time plans with any safety controls that are implemented. They could be copied from um, <coughs> anywhere in terms of if you're giving them um, any recipes copied copy from books or clearly if you're providing schemes of work and recipes etc within college then that's absolutely fine so long as the photographs of the dishes are actually the apprentice's own photographs and it's not just the photograph that's taken from 
from a web page essentially. So we do need those photographs to be um, authentic to the dishes that the apprentice has actually created themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. It does need to cover all the food groups in that appendix four in Commerce Chef and appendix five in Chef Party. And we do need the template as well as I've already said uploading. <coughs> now you can also use the tasks from the apprenticeship training manual um, and upload those which uh, people that are using smart screen um, and using the um, writable PDFs you can clearly you know store those electronically and then upload upload those apprenticeship training manuals but we will still need that appendix six to show that cross-referencing. Cross, cross um, as we've said, the recipe logs will need to be fully signed off prior to starting the um, initial meeting. Um, and the assessment plan from People First does sort of stipulate that um, most of these recipes should be um, from six months in on the apprenticeship. And that's purely um, to ensure that um, the apprentice is competent at that point. Um, and they've got enough knowledge and the dishes that they're creating meet the standards essentially. Um, and obviously these will also be authenticated. So um, yes, um, absolutely. I'm just looking at a couple of questions that have come through and I'll sort of answer those while we're going through. Um, the evidence can absolutely come from there 20% off the job. Um, so in essence, really, there shouldn't be an issue with getting the recipe logs together because the 20% has been met before you get through to Gateway. So that's absolutely fine. Um, and the recipe logs can contain any dishes um, made in the college as well as in the workplace. That's absolutely fine. the process then um, we will be asking for information back from you once you've made your booking um, we'll be asking for mm -hmm. availability um, where actually the culinary challenge can take place and indeed um, number of workstations um, because it can be that for commerce chefs there can be um, one um, independent endpoint assessor and they can view four apprentices at any one time so long as the independent endpoint assessor can view um, very clearly those four apprentices so it's not to disadvantage anybody. So there was a little bit of a keyboard issue. Um, so moving on to the um, initial meeting. Now the initial meeting is a remote meeting that uh, will be done through a conference call and it involves the AIPA who must also have in attendance um, the apprentice and a, represent a representative of their employer. And this must be somebody who works closely with the apprentice and has an understanding of uh, their work role, their responsibilities and is potentially their uh, direct line manager or for example a senior chef who uh, works with them, but more importantly, they need to have the authority to be able to uh, confirm uh, when the apprentice will be available, when uh, they can be taken away from their normal duties, etc. So we can ensure uh, the assessments take place uh, in, a, in a timely manner. Um, they also need to be able to allocate the apprentice with uh, specific sections of the kitchen, for example, uh, to make sure that everything can uh, work in line with uh, the assessment requirements. Um, so what's discussed at the initial meeting, the initial meeting um, should be used to agree the uh, date of the observations and uh, confirm, oh sorry, the observation, uh, confirmation of the culinary challenge dishes, which we'll come on to in a short while, uh, coverage of the food groups and the uh, preparation methods and cooking methods that will be assessed in the culinary challenge and the practical observation. Any security arrangements that the uh, independent, independent endpoint assessor needs to be made aware of. And they also need to agree the house style or any uh, potential adapt uh, adaptations of, uh, of, of that design. And they also need to agree the three course meal for the uh, chef de party uh, and what they're going to prepare, cook and serve. Uh, so this is uh, just a, 
an example of the um, recording form that's to be used uh, during the uh, initial meeting, so it just gives you an indication there of what's going to be covered and uh, the sort of uh, flow of the particular uh, meeting. Uh, so that just gives you a, a flavour of it. Moving on to uh, the multiple choice text test next. Uh, so we have some support materials for the uh, for the test, and they can be found within the assessment pack. So uh, when, when you've registered, you've got access to the assessment pack. Within this are some of the questions. So the multiple choice test, it's um, set time, including 30 minutes uh, reading time for both the uh, Prime Chef and Chef de Party. They are scenario based questions. And I think it's really important to highlight the fact that they really do, the, the, the apprentice really does need to read the questions and read them thoroughly before answering them. They are externally set and marked by us here at City and Guilds. They are undertaken and invigilated within the college, and this can be the workplace if they've got the uh, equipment to do so. Exam conditions apply, um, and it's undertaken by our Evolve system. So preparing the apprentice, uh, it's important that you carry out uh, formative assessments. Uh, share the EPA handbook as well so that they are fully aware of uh, what's going to be covered. Um, ensure apprentices understand uh, such words as main, best, first, and that they understand how to sort of uh, take these questions in the context that, that we're looking for. Um, so it's really important to highlight that focus of the question. Use the sample uh, questions to check their knowledge and explain revision that uh, is required in the build-up to uh, the test. Just one thing that I, sorry, I'm just going to go back to preparing the apprentice. I think it's really important as well to, to, to sort of uh, highlight with you that for Chef de Party particularly, there's a, it's heavily weighted towards the uh, business people and food safety aspects of the, uh, the apprenticeship standard. Um, so where an apprentice on a, on, on a chef to party uh, program may expect it to be very uh, heavily focused around culinary aspects, it's not. It is again uh, around business people and food safety. I think it's important to highlight that. So we're going to move on to uh, culinary. Well, we'll just quickly check if there's any questions. Yes, you can. Um, you can use the um, the training manual as the recipe log. So we will still need it uploading to our EPA portal, but you can use those specific tasks. But we will also need the appendix as well. Um, and yes, it can be produced in college, um, but also it needs to have some sort of employer content in there as well in terms of issues that they would be um, producing um, with the with the employer. Um, uh, we've had a question around the weighting and uh, why is it not around culinary. Um, that is due to uh, the standards that have been approved by the Trailblazer group uh, through People First. We don't have any uh, we don't have any say in the weighting towards that unfortunately. Um, we are certainly using it as part of the consultation piece which is uh, to be completed by people first by the end of this week. So if anybody would like to uh, join us on that, that consultation piece, you can find it on the people first website. Um, but yes, the, the waiting around that exam is all built up around what we uh, what we need to follow from the guidance of uh, people first and the trailblazer group. Um, but yes, unfortunately, it is not uh, heavily weighted towards culinary. And I did send out, when I sent out emails about this webinar, the consultation information as well, the evaluation that people are going through that Jason's just talked about. So please do, um, if you have um, any feedback at all for people first, good, bad, indifferent, then please do get involved because that will clearly support with um, progressing with the with these standards and whether you know we feel that there should be any changes, then obviously that will support with the process. And uh, around the uh, questions, um, with any uh, multiple choice questions, it's always very difficult to avoid ambiguity and things like that. We, we are constantly reviewing our question bank uh, with our current question papers and uh, those going forward. So uh, we are constantly uh, reviewing these and checking these and uh, 
keeping them as uh, live as we possibly can. Thank you. So we're going to move on now. Uh, I think that's all the questions around the uh, question paper. So bear with me a second. Okay, so moving on to the culinary challenge. Can we? Okay, fantastic. So culinary challenge. Can you click again? Oh, oh, sorry, it's my. Yeah. Jason's doing the administration today, so I'm just sat on the other side of the desk. So uh, he, he was he was a bit slow there. Okay, so culinary challenge for Comi Chef. So we'll talk about the two individually. So this is really just confirmation of exactly um, what the culinary challenge is essentially. So we're producing two course meal for two people, well at least the apprentices are. So the setup time, um, there is a, available some setup time um, for the apprentice to sort of get ready. That's not time bound in any way. So clearly they can have some time to collect their equipment, set up their section, um, get things organised. They could start to weigh some ingredients, though not all, because the um, part of the criteria which is in um, both the assessment plan and our endpoint assessment plan, um, does um, stipulate that the endpoint assessor needs to see um, that process taking place, weighing and measuring. Um, but no food preparation can take place at all at this time. So the apprentices need to ensure that they work independently um, and they need to make sure um, that it's in, we need to make sure that it's in a controlled environment. So um, what sort of colleges have been doing that are going through the process currently is they've been using their skilled kitchen. Now clearly uh, if you're a training provider then um, we will need to work with you, you'll need to nominate exactly where you want this culinary challenge to take place. So um, if it needs to take place in the workplace it will need to be in a closed part of um, the employer's kitchen whether that be if, it, if they still work a sort of um, a close down in the afternoon, then that could perhaps be two hours then, or whether it needs to be early morning or later in the evening um, on, a, on a day that it's not normally open. But we will work with you to sort out when the best time to actually carry that culinary challenge out is. So in terms of marking, um, there needs to be a recipe and a time plan submitted to the endpoint assessor on the day of the challenge. Um, and if they actually undertake, if the apprentice undertakes some um, research then it's, and presents that, then there would be an opportunity based on that to gain a distinction. Um, that is part of the distinction criteria. So the two course meal for two people essentially, and the independent endpoint assessor will be taking photographs. Um, of the dishes produced um, and could take photographs of the working processes, etc. So, the requirements of Commie Chef um, this is where between the two observations, um, those food, that food group needs to be covered um, throughout the um, practical observation and the culinary challenge, so across the two, but the from whole has to come um, from the culinary challenge. So um, the main course has to be prepared from meat, fish or poultry from whole. Um, it must have at least one vegetable accompaniment and one starch appropriate to the dish and it must have a sauce appropriate to the dish as well, as well as it being based on a dish from your organisation. So in the initial meeting um, it will be hoped that the apprentice would come with an idea of what this um, main course was going to be, so that they could discuss it with the independent endpoint assessor. In terms of the dessert, this is where the independent endpoint assessor actually nominates um, one a food group that the sorry not a food group but one of the actual um, dessert types there, so cake, sponges, biscuits, gone pastry, secondary cold or hot dessert range. So they would nominate one of those. So for example, they could perhaps nominate a paste dish and the apprentice would then go away, carry out research and create um, a, um, a paste dish based on the organisation. Um, and it, that dish must also then contain a garnish for one of those um, secondary food groups as well.
Freud, we are having problems with being free on the day. Okay. So, on to the um, Chef's Party. So, planning for the um, Chef's Party culinary challenge. So, that consists of a costed menu of three courses a starter, main course, and dessert, with three options for each course. So essentially, the apprentice needs to produce um, three of each of those courses, and the menu needs to reflect all of those points there. And then the independent endpoint assessor then chooses the actual three course meal, a starter, a main course, and a dessert. They then choose that, and the apprentice then essentially creates that menu. Um, and just to point out with this one as well, this also um, needs to include um, or incorporate a meat, fish or poultry from whole as well for one of the dishes. Not for all of them, um, not for two of them, but just at least one of those needs to incorporate that from whole. Um, so this is a little bit more complicated to obviously plan and put together because there's a lot more stipulations there and a lot more bits and pieces that the apprentice needs to take care to ensure that they have got that balanced um, three different starters, three different main courses, three desserts which meet those requirements. Um, so I'm sure you know your your support will go into you know sort of supporting them with putting that together. In terms of um, time, um, I think one of the things that we we've sort of seen is that it, it well it's called a challenge, and we are sort of saying well perhaps you know that's for a reason. Um, there's two hours for the commie chef and three hours for the chef to party. Um, and in some cases, it's proving quite difficult to sort of get all that together. So certainly the preparation time um, before the culinary challenge starts needs to be used wisely by the apprentices. They need to be very well organized and ready to go, essentially, uh, and to have practiced um, because, you know, the people that we've seen that have practiced have definitely done um, a much better job. Um, and clearly they need to be exceptionally focused and start working straight away. Um, I think um, Jason and I both went along to sort of see some mocks in different places and, um, you know, it was very clear where those apprentices had sort of gone the extra mile and done that little bit of extra work and done some more practicing compared to the ones that just sort of piped from the day and were sort of praying really um, and they were the ones that ran out of time. There is a 12 minutes uh, leeway on that assessment. However, that's down to the uh, the endpoint assessor's discretion. And it, it's more around, maybe there's been a slight issue around the assessments, which was possibly beyond the uh, control of the, the, the candidate where uh, they would allow that. It's not through the fact that they've not really performed to the, to, to the quickest of their abilities, perhaps. Uh, that's where it wouldn't be awarded that additional time. So that's essentially a sort of 10% leeway, yep. Yep, which would yep. be slightly different for the chef's party because that's three yep, hours. Sorry. Okay, so just some hints and tips really um, from us and um, you know some thoughts that um, some of you have already been through the process that sort of brought forwards to us. Um, so washing up isn't part of the standard, so we don't need to observe anybody washing up. So, um, so long as the apprentice is keeping their workstation clean and tidy, and working in a manner that promotes food safety, then the washing up can either be done by somebody else or stored um, on a trolley um, to be sort of completed later. Um, it's really beneficial if there is a technician in the room um, with the endpoint assessor and the apprentices, um, should anything be dropped or, or something be forgotten, um, then obviously that technician can then support with that process. Um, as I said earlier, then um, there can be a ratio of one to four for a commie chef, um, so long as the independent endpoint assessor can view all those learners easily. Um, it may or may not be appropriate for chef to party, depends on your numbers, etc. Um, and for some people, they're sort of saying that they would rather it was a more reduced ratio for chef to party. Um, do need some prior consideration of equipment, where it is. Um, clearly, the apprentices don't want to be having running up two flights of stairs to use the blast chiller because um, all the time that they're doing those culinary challenges, then the clock's ticking down. So, um, things as close um, to that room as possible um, and enough of those um, facilities essentially. Um, 
to, to be um, used by the apprentices, etc., so that nobody's going to be disadvantaged in any way. The endpoint assessors will be checking for storage procedures, etc. So um, the apprentices are putting things in fridges. Uh, I mean, whilst they're not going to expect them to be date labelling and colour coding, they will be expecting that they follow, uh, you know, correct storage procedures, etc. Um, clearly, there are criteria that the independent endpoint assessors are checking the apprentices are working towards, and some of those um, are in terms of um, cooking. Um, so probing could be a good idea in terms of um, ensuring that the correct temperature to serve is adhered to. Um, there needs to be consistent portion sizes, so we're serving two portions, those plates need to look consistent. Uh, there needs to be a consideration that there is an excess waste and that lots, um, or that too much is, is, is produced in terms of portion sizes. Um, correct boards need to be used. I know some of these are very sort of basic and simple, but they're all things that sometimes the apprentices under pressure are forgetting. So um, these are just things that we were sort of highlighting. There needs to be enough space, um, as we sort of said earlier, in terms of workstations and ovens, etc., for uh, the number of apprentices in that room. Um, and just a point there that the independent endpoint assessors will stop the assessment um, if there's any issues in terms of, you know, serious issues in terms of health and safety. Just quickly, uh, let me answer some of the questions that have come in. The, uh, with regards to uh, will the EPA check equipment and facilities before choosing the base dessert? Uh, the, remember, this is this is about negotiation as well. It's not just a, a dictated to. So obviously, a discussion will take place around what's going to be uh, finalised as that uh, base dessert. So that the equipment can come into that conversation. But in terms of um, the apprentice decides what that dish is, clearly. So they're given um, whatever the, the group is. So in terms of paste or sponge, the apprentice then decides. So one would hope that the apprentice won't be choosing um, dishes that couldn't be created by them eventually. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the uh, practical observation. Uh, so what's required for a successful observation? Um, the apprentice must be operating as part of a team and be able to interact with other staff and also they need to be interacting with internal customers. Um, the environment should include sufficient space for the city goes in and, uh, assessor to observe, uh, also take notes and uh, photographs. There must be the opportunity for the apprentice to cover all the food groups for uh, both the uh, commie chef and uh, chef to party range of food groups. Um, normal kitchen commercial working environment is required. It needs to reflect the typical working conditions. Um, so you do need to avoid, uh, or you need to you need to consider the uh, levels of trade. It doesn't need to be too busy that uh, you can't have the right focus and attention. But at the same token, it, it, to avoid those low periods of, uh, of trading. Um, the uh, chef of party is required to lead a team uh, in the preparation, cooking and uh, finishing of dishes, so that needs to be evidence as well during this. Uh, some key timings for the chef de party and commie chef. Um, 24 hours before, they can prepare stock if required. They can check their equipment and ingredients um, or have it scheduled to arrive. Um, on the day, the commie chef um, is over three hours and shift to party four hours. Um, 30 minutes before the observation, they can collect away ingredients, but as Amelia said earlier, there does need to be some evidence of that through the uh, observation, so not all. Um, they, need, they, they can use that time effectively to collect equipment and utensils, um, check that they are working, and switch on equipment, etc., such as ovens. And this won't be observed as part of the practice. Um, it really is in, it really is an essential aspect that the apprentice demonstrates as much of uh, the range as possible in line with the assessment requirements. 
Um, what you will find is if they don't cover the large range of requirements, then it will really put a disadvantage towards them when it comes to the professional discussion, because it would have too much to cover at that aspect of the, the, uh, the professional discussion. So uh, moving on to the professional discussion, um, the independent endpoint assessor will send out areas for discussion um, and the key questions with, with uh, giving them five days uh, notice of this. So in advance of the uh, professional discussion taking place, they would receive the information that's required. It's not gener generally a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, at the moment, they are all conducted through uh, video webinars. Um, uh, the discussion cannot be held on the same date as the observation, so there does have to be that, uh, that, that window of days uh, between it. Uh, some of the topics that may be included are uh, highlighted on the right hand side there, so allergens, team relationships, etc. Uh, menu design, for example. Mm -hmm. The professional discussions, the times, uh, 40 minutes for the chef to party, uh, sorry, for the commie chef. Um, but, but allow 50 minutes and say for the uh, chef to party 90 minutes but again allow uh, one hour and 40 minutes. Um, the review of the recipe log um, that is 10 minutes for the uh, coming chef and 30 minutes for the chef to party and then the remaining time is uh, to uh, go over the rest of the standard. Uh, we need to find a, a suitable room or you need to find a suitable room to carry out the assessments. Um, access to water and glasses should they need it, uh, which I think I need now. <laughs> and uh, where applicable, internet access and suitable equipment for the uh, remote access. Um, must also uh, have, uh, be able to assess areas of the standard. Sorry, during this, they need to be able to assess areas of the standard that are not being seen in the practical observations or the culinary challenge, and that's the purpose behind that uh, remaining time. I apologise. Um, apprenticeship preparations, uh, they need to familiarise themselves with the information they've record, uh, they have recorded in the training manual. Um, they need to have read through the endpoint assessment uh, task instructions. Think of examples from their role to show that they can uh, show how they demonstrate uh, meeting the pass or distinction or and distinction criteria in the endpoint assessment pack. Uh, practices of professional discussion assessments within the uh, uh, with their assessor, and that they've read the information received from uh, the endpoint assessor on the topics that are going to be covered during the uh, discussion. And they also need to make notes and take them into the discussion uh, to support them with their uh, preparation. Uh, just moving on to feedback, uh, the endpoint assessor will not provide any feedback to the apprentice during or immediately following the endpoint assessments. Feedback will only be provided uh, following the submission of evidence uh, and after any grade has been determined. So uh, they will not receive uh, feedback until that time. So um, just some points to consider about endpoint assessments. Um, an apprentice who passes the endpoint assessment can't reset any component part to achieve a higher grade. So that is part of the assessment plan that it's um, sort of capped. So um, that, that's what they have to sort of do. If an apprentice fails, then um, should they need to retake, then again, they can only pass um, that component part um, that they are that they failed and that they are retaking. However, um, in some cases, depending on um, which part of the um, endpoint assessment we're talking about, they could still have the opportunity to achieve a distinction overall. So um, the, re the resets can be booked, um, you know, at the earliest opportunity. So you have to sort of book, um, rebook a, with our endpoint assessment team, except for um, the actual exam because you can sort of administer that as we said earlier using our evolved secure assess system so you can sort of do that although there is a five-day window um, for that so once the um, you sort of go on to book you sort of have to then wait five days before the apprentice can then sort of reset. Um, as I said the um, retaking the maximum grade that can be achieved for that task is only a pass. 
Um, all of the assessments must occur um, within a two month period wherever possible. Um, and our final grades will take up to 20 days for you to sort of receive whether your apprentice um, actually gained a pass or a distinction. Um, these are the, um, the World Chef digital credentials. So these are the digital badges that are linked to both Commie Chef and Chef Party. So that was just sort of showing you those again, just as a reminder really that they will be um, being sent out to all apprentices who pass. Um, and that will be happening in the new year once we've um, sorted all the systems out to allow that to happen. Okay, um, and just to sort of show you again um, the, the certificates that will be received. So the one on the right hand side is our statement of achievement. So uh, that will clearly stipulate the different endpoint assessment component parts and then the exact grade achieved for each one of those. So if an apprentice has got a distinction for some of them, then it will clearly sort of stipulate distinction or pass. And then the one there on the left is the Institute for Apprenticeships, which we claim via the ESFA for you. Um, and that will just sort of hold the name, as you can see there, of the apprentice the standard that they're achieving, the level, and then whether they achieve, in our case, for our standards, a pass or a distinction. Okay, so I think there were a few more questions that came through, and I think we've got sort of um, 10 minutes left, so we'll sort of pull up a few of those questions and see if we can um, answer some more. We're now struggling to expand the uh, question box. IT is failing us today by the looks of it. Yeah, do that. Scrolling down a bit Sorry. small. My apologies. So there was just one there um, about um, can a stock be prepared, not for the culinary challenge, but yes, for the um, practical observation. Scrolling back up on the last one. That's fine, we've done that one. We've done that one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Is there a training manual for the chef's party? Yes, there is, but it, there isn't a paper version. So it is via access to smart screen, um, which is a writable PDF. It's exactly the same sort of format, essentially, as the paper versions that you might have for the chef, um, but it is via writable PDFs. So you could then, if you wanted to, sort of print those out. Um, but since we sort of asked for it to be um, uploaded to our EPA portal, then, um, it would probably be, you know, sort of easier to use the writable PDFs. Um, and if you want more information about that or how to access it, then I'm happy to sort of um, send that through to you. Um, and yes, the slideshow will absolutely, um, we can send that out as well if that's sort of helpful, um, as well as obviously the recording will be sort of sent through to you. So that should all come through to you by um, next week. Um, and that's it, looks like we've answered them all. Fantastic, well thank you very much everybody for your time. Um, thank you for all your questions, they've been absolutely brilliant. Um, we hope that helps, obviously this will be recorded and it'll be stored, so you know, should you need to go back and listen to it, you'll be able to. We're also doing exactly the same for team member and hospitality supervisor 
in March. I think I sent that out. Um, I know we've got a number of people already registered for that. Um, but yes, please register for that. And um, we'll try and keep you as up to date as we possibly can. Um, the next newsletter will be out at the end of the month. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.